Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you doing? How's it going? I'm Lily, if you didn't know. I don't know about you, but once this video goes out, I'm starting my first week of school of my spring semester. I know some people have already started school, and I know other people don't start until way later, so I thought this would be a good in-between. What I want to talk about today is some productivity methods that I learned and tried out last semester, my first semester of college. I love learning about productivity and different methods that you can use to become more productive and more efficient in life. Yeah, I know, I'm a nerd, but I just love learning about them. Like, there's so many different ways that you can go about completing one project. Before I share the productivity methods that I tried out last semester, I really want to emphasize that some methods might work for you, some might not, and some of them might work for only a certain period of time. The methods that I tried out tend to reflect the certain time period of the semester and how much motivation and energy I had and how much effort I was willing to put in. So without further ado, let's get started. Before we get into methods though, I want to talk about something that I found so interesting and I constantly thought about once I learned about it. It's called Parkinson's Law. I actually learned that from Best Dressed and I'll have that video linked down below. So it's a general rule that states the amount of work required adjusts to the time available for its completion. That's why sometimes people can procrastinate but then they can still complete something within you know, the last 24 hours that the assignment or project is due because that's the only time that you have left to complete that project. It'll be applicable. I'll, I'll try to bring it up whenever I can, but yeah, just think about it. Like, to me, that's just so crazy. So that's, that's the first thing. Something that I tried throughout the whole semester while trying other methods at the same time was bullet journaling. Now bullet journaling within itself is a whole other topic and a whole other video, but what I do enjoy was that, what was it? At its core, bullet journaling is for productivity and you know, getting your thoughts down into one journal so you can stay organized but still be as chaotic as you need to be. Strictly for school, I started off with these like ex not even extravagant but to me they are extravagant and fancy and time consuming spreads and they looked nice for the most part but over time I just I lost patience for making the spreads I just didn't want to do that and I wanted to find more efficient ways so you'll you'll see that things my spreads get a lot lot simpler throughout the semester and they became a lot more efficient as well. Before the semester began, I made this map of my week of blocks of time when I would have class, including lecture or discussion, and I included certain office hours for some of my professors, and I also created the same thing this semester, but as you can see, it's way simpler. This was a lot easier to create, and it did not take me as much time as the last one. Then I started creating these bubble type boxes for each day and I would allow myself this much space to give myself the schedule where blocks of time would be taken out for a certain class that I need to attend or some other thing that's going on for the day and then that also still gave me enough space on the bottom to create a list of daily to-do tasks that I wanted to complete. I also wrote down when certain assignments were due for a certain class and I highlighted those so I knew that something was due for that day. Then I started getting way lazier and I didn't have the patience to create rounded edges so I made super easy rectangles. I didn't, I no longer made stripes to highlight certain hours or whatever and I just made the boxes and I only outlined them with different colors. Um, yeah, you can see that I'm losing my patience for um, the aesthetic. This is when there was a major shift in my weekly spreads. 
I decided to use the left side to divide into sections for each class and just make lists of what assignments or things needed to be completed for that week. And then on the right side, I created sections for each day so I could again write out when certain things were due on certain days and I could still create daily tasks and daily agendas for myself. And I did some little doodles. I started feeling restricted by these boxes and I didn't like how it felt like I had limited space to create a number of tasks for myself for the day. So I started shifting over and this was the spread that I that became my holy grail and became my go-to spread. Um, I would still have each class sectioned off on the left side with a list of things and assignments that I need to complete for that week or just assignments that are ongoing. And then on the right side, I would generally keep this side blank at the beginning of the week. I would section off a little skinny section at the top to uh, tell me like the events going on of that week. Like for example, I had a dentist appointment on the 14th. And then um, as the days would go by, so on Monday I would create a list or maybe Sunday night I would create a list of stuff that I wanted to complete for Monday and then I could make the list as long or as short as I needed it to be and then Monday night I would create a list for Tuesday and so on. There are so many YouTubers online who do bullet journaling and a lot of them end up being like the artsy artsy people and they can you know they like to doodle for fun and they like to make their spreads look really pretty and I wanted so bad to be one of those people but I'm not and maybe I can be one day but I'm really not there yet so I'll have the bullet journal YouTube channel linked below and that will show you like the core of bullet journaling and you know the productivity methods that you can use and like just certain spreads that will save a lot of time but be very effective for you possibly Another method that I tried and learned was overwhelming your list. That I learned from Matt Devella. I couldn't find the specific video where he talks about this. I'll just have his channel linked down below. If you list only one thing that you need to do for the whole day, even though it might only take you four hours to actually complete that task, since it's the only thing that you have listed to do for that day, you might end up spending the whole day just to complete it. Again, Parkinson's law. So that's what blew my mind. What he suggested was to put the one or however many things that you want to complete for the day at the top of your list. And after that, overwhelm your list with other things that you might want to do afterwards. You don't have to give yourself more schoolwork or more studying to do for the, for the day, but you can also list out like, take out the trash, do some chores, or walk your dog, anything. When I give myself more to do, it creates a sense of urgency. It's not that I'm going to rush through the assignment to get it done so I can move on to the next task, but it creates this sense of urgency that like, it's not only these three things that I need to do, it's these other things as well afterwards that I need to do. So. That's why I really like this method. Even though it worked for me, I can totally see so many ways as to how this method would not work for some people. Sometimes I get completely overwhelmed by all the things I need to do, so that would cause me to shut down and then I end up not completing like the, the top three things that I actually wanted to get done for the day. Other people, they might sometimes, you know, complete all the things that they wanted to do but they couldn't finish the last two things on their list for that day and that might get into their head that they didn't do enough for the day. Of course that's another consequence that might come out of using this method but I want to emphasize that if you do use this method just make sure that you remember what you prioritized for that day. Really shift your mindset and your focus to realize that you got those things done for the day even though you didn't necessarily finish two of those other below top priority <laughs> task. But again, only use it if you feel like it might work for you. If it ends up overwhelming you, of course, don't use it. So those were the two major methods that I used throughout the semester. And then these next three are certain methods that I 
tried out for certain periods of time. The first method that I tried out and I learned from my English class was creating a labor log. Pretty much you create a table. The labeled columns are going to be the date, the time, the location, description of your task, the duration of which it took to complete this task, and the engagement level, and notes. Obviously, you can tweak this table to whatever works for you. You don't necessarily have to create each of the listed columns that I said. You're using this log to keep track of when you work on certain tasks. So I created a spreadsheet for each class. The labor log would provide you with a lot of data to tell you, you know, maybe a certain time of day that works best for you or how long it took you to complete a certain task that you might do repetitively. I quickly learned that for my intro to physiology class, it took me about an hour and a half to take notes and read through each module. Later on, I transitioned the online spreadsheets to inside my bullet journal and then from there I made like a bar graph of how many hours I put into school not including class time. I had never put in more than six hours into school and I realized that I don't need to spend more than six hours because especially during that time I was getting everything done on time, I was like pacing myself really well, I wasn't procrastinating. So it made me realize that I don't need to spend the whole day on school even though I have the whole day free. And I can prioritize other things like my mental health which includes possibly going outside, going for a walk, exercising. Something that also happened when I was using the labor log was that once I wrote down the time that I started working on something, my brain clicked to make me feel like, okay, right now I have to be completely focused and productive towards this task for this class. Even though the labor log was strictly for myself, I felt like if I were to log this time that I'm starting, but then I go on my phone and go on Instagram for a certain amount of time, and I still include that time that I was on Instagram in the labor log, then I'm being untrue to myself. Whenever I logged the start time, I immediately shifted to productivity. And maybe that was something that could happen for you too and it could be really helpful, so maybe you should try it out. I saw this video by Karma Medic. In this video that I have linked down below, he talked about how he would work for four hour blocks of time. Four hours at a time. One of his reasonings behind doing two four hour blocks for each day, he would only have to refocus and get him get his mind into that productive mindset two times out of the day. And that for me just made a lot of sense because yeah, I can, I can work for a certain amount of time, but then once I feel like I need to take a break, then, you know, I don't know how long it'll take for me to get back into that productive mindset. So that was something that I found extremely interesting and I wanted to try it out. I continued to use the labor log during this time period where I tried um, setting a timer for four hours. I don't think I ever worked for four hours straight. <laughs> as much as I did try to complete four hours, I just could not do it. I didn't have the patience for it. I got tired quickly and I ended up only being able to work for maybe two hours at best. That just goes to show that it was a method that I tried out, but it didn't work for me because I simply don't have that kind of patience. Like I can't wait four hours. I have to give myself some type of break in between and that's okay, but maybe it'll work for you. So. I suggest watching that video if you want to learn more about how and why he does it. So, yeah. Last, but definitely, definitely not least, we have the Pomodoro method. I learned this method from John Fish and I'll have his video linked down below. I also just love his channel overall. Like he's just such an intellectual and that's just the level of intellectual that I want to be on. Anyways, I'm getting off track. This method was just, it was like the holy grail for me. I was getting so tired. I had like little to no motivation to get anything done 
any day, like every day I just felt that same way. Pretty much what you do is you set a timer for 25 minutes to get work done and then after those 25 minutes, when the timer's done, you can take a break for only five minutes. And then after those five minutes, you have to set another alarm for 25 minutes where you get back into the working mindset. It's pretty much like the opposite of the four hour blocks, but somehow it just worked for me. 25 minutes felt long enough to really get a good chunk of work done, but it felt short enough for me to feel like I had the patience for the 25 minutes. In general, I like to have a sense of control. Before I watch any movie, I like to check to see how long that movie is so I have a general idea of when it will end. When I first started reading again, every time I got to a new chapter, before I would start reading that chapter, I'd have to flip the pages to the end of that chapter just to see how many pages are in that chapter so I can like mentally prepare for how long I need to read for. And maybe that's just a me thing, but that's kind of why the Pomodoro method really worked for me because I know that I only need to work for 25 minutes and then I'm giving myself a break. The five minute break though felt long enough for me to get something done during my break, like using the restroom and getting water and still having spare time. But it also felt short enough for me to not get out of the productive mindset. I ended up doing random stuff during my five minute breaks that ended up making me feel really good. Sometimes I would just dance in my room like this. Or I would do some push-ups or squats like this. Or I would lie in my bed like this. Yeah, those were the three major things that I did during my five minute break. So do whatever works for you. So those were the productivity methods that I tried out last semester and I might try out this semester. Again, I want to emphasize that method, certain methods might work for you and some methods might not work for you. It all depends. It's a trial and error process and sometimes they'll work for certain periods of time but then it'll stop working because maybe your amount of energy or your amount of motivation will change and shift. So it's about adapting and really being in tune with yourself. I hope you enjoyed learning about these productivity methods and I hope you can take something away from this. If not, I hope you enjoyed listening to my beautiful voice. You can like, subscribe, and comment. Um, if you have any productivity methods that you would like to share with me, I would love to hear them. I'm excited for this next semester. I hope you're excited for your semester or quarter, whether you started or haven't started yet. And good luck to everyone. Um, we'll get through this. We got this. We got this, okay? Okay, boop! These were my notes on Neil deGrasse Tyson's masterclass. The only class I've taken in full and the best class. Oh, oh I hit my head so hard on my bed. Ouch.